unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Today I'm to preach a sermon entitled Delivered from People. Tell your neighbor, be delivered from people. There are many Christians who are delivered from animals, they're delivered from shoes and cars, they're delivered from family castles, they are delivered from Usmania cousins' witchcraft, they are delivered from grandfather's witch stories, they are delivered from Juju, they are delivered from Nakarema, they are delivered from everything, they are delivered from, from poverty, they are delivered from sickness, they are delivered from suffering, they are delivered from tears, they are delivered from poor feeding, they are delivered from sleeping badly, strife, but they are not delivered from people. Today, by the grace of God, I just want you to be, by the time I'm done, I just want you to be delivered from people. Because some people, everything in their lives has been done, but they're still bound to men. They're still bound to people. They're still bound to people. So everything in this world has refused to be as it should be in your life. Because you fear people. Because you're bound to people's opinions, people's words. A Christian comes and says, Apostle, I don't even know where to begin from. Then you start crying. Some of them are even too baby, they even leave church and never coming back. You go sit about me, I'm not coming back. <laughs> people leave church. They leave family, I'm never going to sit in your car again, I'm never going to call you, I block you on my WhatsApp, see my I unfriend you on Facebook. Do you know Facebook doesn't give notification of being unfriendly? But it gives notification of liking. But the moment you like, when they unfriend you to mania. So some people like Facebook. When they like you, they know how to smile, but when they don't like you, they know how to maintain a status quo. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Then after that, they get in the back and say, can I hate that chick? Anything that has hatred with women becomes chic. I don't know why. They stop being ladies, they become chic. So you hear, I quit the church, why? There are some girls who are in my manga and me. Uh, honey, why did you quit? Because my cousin in the same house were in my manga and me. And this is the thing about it. For example, if the devil knows that you benefit from something and he wants to get you out, he looks for your weak point and then he realizes your weak points are people. What? He goes and sits on a woman in the evening and stands up to speak things. After the woman finishes speaking these things, he makes sure they reach you. You understand? And after the package is delivered, he looks in the back to see. You're too tired. We are even working out of church. Listen, you're not helping Apostle Grace to come. Muslimania, if you don't come, he will lose you. No, the Bible is clear. They only walked out for us to us To come in, simple. Yes, we will miss you, but sweeter ones will come. Some Christians don't understand that you never got born again of people. When you made that public confession or private confession in your bed or wherever you were, in that meeting when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, this was a love relationship that you entered with the Lord, the Master, Creator of heaven and earth, the man who died for your sins. Any other third party is just immaterial. Hallelujah. So anything outside opinion, it doesn't matter. Let me tell you, the human heart, I'm not going to be a spirit heart, but I'm talking about the human heart. It's just stubborn. Human beings, not spiritual, but human beings are susceptible 
to break in any law laid and set before them. It is wired and configured inside them. That guy was with a friend of mine. He had trouble. His sister had brought a guy at home. No, he doesn't trust the guy. No, one day he's seated having breakfast somewhere in Tinder, and then the sister comes, meet my boyfriend, but DJ Grenade. DJ Grenade. <laughs> DJ Grenade, even if you, you sweeten it like how, already the name has a problem. <laughs> so the guy got his sister, you know you are too young, how can you? What? The moment you start to tell someone, Look, don't love that, you have set fire for them to love them. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Haven't you seen people who are even just out of home and they go with every broke boyfriend? I will die with you, you understand? They just said when she goes with a couple of broke wife, boyfriend, you're gonna take me in that. There is nothing. I had a friend who worked with me many years ago. He had a sister. She got pregnant when she was in school. Oh, the father cried. Don't go back to that boy. Next day, the girl was there. She got another child. Oh, where did you go? She was a rough woman. She was a sad child. No, 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 and that's why now I fear men also. Because by the time a man wires like a woman, he separates her from her mother, her father, her cousin. You know the girl is just wiring. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> men say amen. He finds like an innocent girl, couple of my cousins, she has brothers, uncles, sisters, everyone is there. Then he starts wiring her. Boop, boop, switches the batteries, removes the ever ready, puts Panasonic. <laughs> 16 green is wired with yellow, pink lines are cut and black is put. By the time the girl comes back home, Mulaya, hi, she bypasses you. Even if you're her brother, you look like another man. <laughs> you know those push-up guys who put on kids, they have a way. <laughs> Do you know I've never understood why girls like nigga guys, these guys who are... <laughs> you don't like men who are, you know... Who you? <laughs> those who guys of man pull the steeds, how's that show you? Those are the ones they want. They want those who guys. You see, a guy loves it. You think it's fake? Now, you a man, a guy, can you not move his arm? We can't run to one city. Kasoma Aya. Am I lying? Those boys with jeans like this are the ones who have girlfriends. For us to pull them up, what? I don't know how those guys do it. The guy removes the cape, it is all full of Like with small snakes. They have short names. I don't know where they get them. Rem, Jesse, Pete, that is. And the old lines of our ears, all of them ended with O. Mato. Keep so. Where she be the girl? What do you be wanting with those guys? What? Now, if you find my man, who doesn't even have swag for him? He loves God. <laughs> but he's gentle. What? I don't want gentle men. <laughs> One Negro, those guys who know how to survive in the hardest conditions. I don't know, they find protection. I don't know. But they're secure there. They're secure with Harvard graduates, Oxford. No. And those guys who speak nice English, but they never graduated. Those are the ones. Me, <laughs> you, why? Ah, uh, women, let's first talk. Why? <laughs> You're looking for boys outside choir. Treat this choir guy. Like that woman who doesn't give a damn about your opinion. Christians should also learn to be like that. Don't give a damn about what people think about you. You don't have to always carry another man's opinion over your head. Oh, he said I'm ugly. Can you believe he said I'm ugly? So what if he said? Hallelujah. Long story short, the brother talked until the sister refused. And then one day the breakup of her and DJ Grenade was just she caught him cheating. Otherwise, if she had not caught DJ Grenade.
Be delivered from men. Tell your neighbor, be delivered from people. Let me read you something. First Corinthians 10, 29. Yes, the ultimate question. He says, why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? Why is what is okay with me judged by another man in a certain way he might think it is and his conscience might come on me, you understand, and put me under certain line of judgment to rob my liberty of what I know is right. I'm not talking of now learn to put on your minis and come in church. I'm under liberty. I'm under the grace. I'm not talking about stupidity. No, I'm talking of a place where you know that you are free to pray. But someone's conscience wrong. One time, many years ago, we had a um, kind of, it was like a praise evening what? So one of those days, these guys sing a very nice thing and then they say, can you make a Holy Ghost shout in the house of the Lord? No. The indigenous grace, Rebecca, doesn't know how to shout a the other guy, okay? Now, while I, when people are making exotic ones, they say, look at these guys. Why? It was for the Lord. We can understand. The man is crazy. He be like that sometimes. He's not random. So me, I scream my those things of David dance up to his clothes were up. So me, I was also screaming the clothes offline. So people are Ooh, exotic. Oh, I covered my oh. So there was this brown girl who was standing next to me. She looked at me like the way she looked at me. She put sense in me. You're shouting. Try to be a bit cultured. Put some common decency in your life. You are a whole piece of work. You need help. She looked at this guy. After some time again, they said, Talk for the Lord! What? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> exotic grace, exotic behave, boy, behave. <laughs> Her conscience arrested me. And it robbed me of my liberty. <laughs> Now, some people are even worse. There is a way a man, somebody can just sit there and the way he looks even changes the way she walks. If he wasn't there, she would be walking different. But the moment she saw that he's there, God has not created you to turn strokes when they are watching you. No, whether they are watching or not watching, but what I'm telling you. That's all you have. You understand? Women, that's the truth. Don't try to hide your cross legs. Keep them as they are. That's that when you're smiling. You say, yeah, Get away with Nothing more, nothing less. Your accent changes. Even the one who says, I'm coming tomorrow. He says, I'm coming tomorrow. You want to cook that City oil. Because a man is standing there, a certain dude. When the dude leaves, you go back and say, hey, hey, that was it. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. You go back to oil. But well, when the guy is there, you maintain your what? You're not at liberty. You're bound. Be delivered. I don't care whether you sit handsome, you stay with your accent. Because tomorrow you are going to enter that house and the accent will change after one child. Be delivered from people. If you love singing, don't play a cosa. I'm an angel, you are in the supermarket. Don't you care in a Wawasa? No, to come back. No, 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 no,
So, in the very event that a certain employee, a fellow employee, for example, abuse, you know, insulted, what do you do? Common decency, as in professionalism, you know, because you go in those things and then you quarrel. No. There are lines of responsibility. I can, you know, work out like a professional because the lines of professionalism, they require a line of, you know, an inaugurated line of, you know, yeah, so if somebody abuses me, I can tell them, look, it's not treasonable that we cry. There surely can be another way we can solve it. I'm not listening to you right now, you're quarreling. Can we make some peace? If it's too much, can I look for a supervisor? Can I speak to that supervisor and say, hey, supervisor, I think there's a problem with this lady. Because she goes a bit overboard and her temperature is too hard to control. You see, you can escalate. But the most important thing is any professional should know how to present and present themselves as an acting present of people. Yeah. They want more money first day. Somebody else do an abuse, they just be they come to the best community of Anigo Sosa. Anigo Sosa, and Seban Sosa. Remember the interview, Seban Sosa. Because the conscious is a funny thing. It draws its line of expectation that if you're smart enough, you play it in the station. There are certain things if you continue to act sooner or later, the moment they realize who you are, trust me, you irritate. You talk at me, ain't it to talk at me? You get up, but my name is Yoyo. Amplify a kafu, kalitawo. Says that he knows I am marrying a talk at you. But don't be all so quiet. And then the next day you're like, No, we are not to have a man. Listen, my liberty should not be judged by another man's conscience. You must be who you know you are. You understand? And be yourself. If you need improvement, let it be improvement. That's that when you enter in there, it still stays improvement. There was no two sides of you. And on the day you stay, come and say, Nari, you know, you go like that. That's that he knows which button not to pray. And in the process of restoration, if he runs, it's not yours. Yours will stay. Be delivered from the opinions of people. Do you know how many people cannot do anything in their life? because of how certain people think about it. Do you know how many people are not even free to do what they must do? 
and they feel it's right to do. But the opinions of men hold them. Let me show you something in the book of Proverbs. This is the wisdom of Solomon. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 25. The fear of a man bringeth what? A snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be fed. There are two things that snare Christians. Your mouth and the fear of men. There are only two things written in the scripture. The first line that ensnares men is the word. He says, for without mouth are you ensnared. But the second part that ensnares men is the words of men. The fear of men. The moment you start to fear people. Have you been around places? For example, one time um, when I was working, there was a major boss of one place. So one time he comes to my office. He enters, and the moment I see him, I just put my phone down. Oh, I couldn't see you like an old buddy. So some guy looks at me like this. This guy, Shukan, how are you going? In fact, he had come to ask me figures. He couldn't ask me figures. I trust you. You'll make this brand shine. I trust you. There's something about you. It's wonderful. I like it. <laughs> I said, now look at these three guys who fear this man every day. But really, what do men fear? They don't fear men. They fear opinions of men. They fear what those men think. You're not afraid of this big body. No, you're afraid of what that man will think or that person will think about you. Are you hearing me? And that is wrong for you to fear men. The message doesn't, in fact, doesn't only bring out the line of fear. It speaks of the opinion. He says the fear of human opinion disables. Testing in God protects you from that. He says the fear of human opinion disables. If you want to be disabled, in the spirit, fear men. Even when you go beyond a council and your conviction is true that what you're doing is right, never make a mistake to fear. Don't fear anyone. Why? Because either fear the Lord and revive him or fear men. There is no, you cannot fear both. He tells you that the fear of man, the opinions of those men, they disable. The moment you start to fear human opinion, you go down to the dungeons of destruction and disability. You will frustrate every ability and potential in you because of fearing men. Don't fear men. I saw a man one time who was called to a meeting. He sweated and his heart stopped because of men. He died because of men. He was scared. He had a fortress to answer. But he was too scared of what should come out and he died. Not necessarily that his wife is either innocent or guilty. It could be any of the two. But he's scared. He sees a man in many fears. There are people, somebody else tells you, don't ever pass there again and you'll never pass there. No. You should be the one to be feared. You hear Christian saying, Mama, the sinner can do that. You fear me. You're deceiving yourself. Hallelujah. Stop listening to human opinion. So what if they say you're a prostitute? Okay, so what if they say you stole? Uh-huh. So what? Get to a point where you're too immune to men's words that even when they talk, they realize that whenever you get out, you're wasting time. They will never waste time on you. Some of us, what have these men called us? Cult, you know. But have we lost our style? No, we stay preaching. The gospel. Why? Because they didn't annoy that. But those things, if someone wants to say, could you read? Really? No, 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 no. Let them say. Let them say. We are delivered. In fact, when we sat in this meeting and then these men started to say, oh, we are banishing you from the university. I told this woman, you don't have any power to do that. So she says, are you sure? I'm so busy to listen to this kind of nonsense. How can you say things that you know are not true? You understand? Now, supposing we also, oh, we just kissed us. Oh, okay, let's go. And the devil wins. No. Sometimes you also have to learn to stand your ground when you know you're fighting for the truth. You know, you don't need to raise eyebrows and then lift punches. No, but you can say no solidly. Be humble. Gun, but, you, but every time for you, everything, yeah, and they may eat, eat gum, you eat it. Eat grass, you eat grass. Some people are like that. Anything can be done to them. One time I met a friend crying over opinions. I laughed. You know some people are really bound. I'm not talking about bondage of demons. No, look at the bondage of someone crying. Why is she crying? Sophie said something. Sophie said it. Let me tell you, I don't give a hoot 
of what anyone should say about me if I know that I'm innocent about it. It's nothing. You see, one thing people have never understood is this. Gossip is not a witness. It's a demon. Because the spirit of gossip is the spirit of accusation. And the spirit of accusation, if you realize, translate Satan, from any translation, realize Satan, the word Satan is translated as the accuser of the brethren. The ministration of condemnation, which is after the dictates of the law, can only speak to the condemnation and accusation. That's the spirit. It's from hell itself. I don't care whether whatever you're gossiping is true. If you're gossiping to the distraction, not the edification, and if you're speaking things that are not in love, trust me, you're speaking from Satan himself. There's no middle ground in Jate. That's why, if you want to know a person used of the devil, just look at someone who can gossip. If he's a thief, let God do what? Tell me. He knows how to tell me. But there are people in this world who think as though for them, God just sent them to snake everyone. For them, it's their divine ministry. They will never say anything except speaking about other people. God has never called you to, to show the witnesses of men and what they did last night and last summer. It has never been your ministry. When I was among you, Paul says, I saw to know only one thing, Christ dead and resurrected. Even if it is true, you saw the guy at one, still it was not your business. The Bible says in Thessalonians, mind your own business. Work with your own hands that you might have a testimony among them that are without. Do you know how many things some of us know? Do you know some of us, if we started to speak, would split even couples? Because for us, even the married one who cheated comes to us and says, I cheated on my wife. Can you believe your husband? <laughs> We're the ones who tell the guys to do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And after you do it, leave it. Go make peace with her. Talk to her and tell her, you know what, I screwed up. But imagine I skip the guy. How can you know, no, 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 how to tell her? Do you know how many secrets we keep? The Bible has said we are stewards of the mysteries. The word mysteries are secret. God trusts us with the secret. And I'll tell you the truth. The moment you learn the way of the judgments of God, you realize the one thing you will always realize in your spirit too is the secrets of men. There are things you can't hide from you. You're even shocked at the things I sometimes tell you because you don't think I know. Then I just tell them, you book one and say, hey, Apostle, of course I did not. Why? Because I understand the judgments that are preceded by love. I know what the love of God should do. It covers a multitude. It then sits to the exposing of the man or the destruction of the man's career and reputation. God has not called us to destroy persons by what we know about them. He has called us to build persons by what we know about them. And if it's a line of building, this love has to cover, not the seeking to expose what the man is weak in, but rather to speak of what the man is strength and death. But the line in church has lost love. These things you call love in church, they are not love. Right now there are people here who can't shake each other's hands. And you look at each other in every face, and then you wake up in the morning and praise God. The Bible says that there is a sin that leads to death. If you read the scriptures very well, you realize that the sin that leads to death is actually unforgiveness. Many of you, you're dying because of unforgiveness. Nothing else. You fail to get healed because of unforgiveness. You fail to get those things that you need because of unforgiveness. Yes, New Testament dispensation. Let's just go to, to Mark 11, 24. He says, Therefore I say unto you, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Next line. And when you stand praying, do what? When you stand praying, do what? If you ought to have anything against any, that your Father, which is in heaven, may also forgive you his pastors. Are you hearing me? Yes, ask for the movement of mountains and believe everything you've asked for. Give me the amplified version of that. For this reason, I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe and trust and be confident that it's granted to you and you'll get it. Full stop. That's fine. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Believe it. Let it what? Go. In order that that your father who is in heaven may also forgive your own callings and shortcomings and let them drop. Many people have forgiven but they've not let drop. You hurt me. I forgive you. But I don't want to talk to you. There cannot be a line of forgiveness without the true place of reconciliation. 
There cannot be a place of forgiveness. I'm not saying get again to that person who you know God you can tell them every secret. But at least love them enough. The place where they don't feel that you don't love them enough. Are you hearing me? Love them enough. If you say, I will never trust you with words again. Let me not trust you with words again, but let me also trust you with money. And while I wait for you to be trusted with words, but let that friendship still be there. Let it not, that people have separated shoes, they've separated clothes, they're no longer moving in their own cars and other friends' cars, they're no longer sending each other WhatsApp messages, they used to talk up to three guys, did you see, like, oh, uh, now they don't even talk to each other anymore, and they're here. <laughs> it takes a form of deliverance. I learned to forgive for my sake. And there is one thing I learned over the years, and I'll teach everyone. If you want to easily forgive, just think of your future. A man who can't forgive after seeing his future, such men die quickly because they don't even have a future. Now, I'm thinking of the millions that are going to be saved and touched by my ministry. I'm thinking of the numbers that are going to come to the seven faith, to the men that are going to be healed. And I'm seeing an insignificant thing between me and brother. I'm seeing the end of my life one day and our lines of judgment and how now we get to heaven. And I realized that the man was not himself. There was a demon on him. But I did not love enough to know that this was a demon working my brother. It was not him. And the mandate that Christ has laid upon my spirit was to be my own brother's keeper. Regardless of whatever is happening, I must be able to realize this is a demon working the woman. She doesn't also love gossiping, but she can't stop. Can I first put gossip aside and know that she is like this? Accept her while you work on the other peripheral. But now men don't even talk. People used to have each other after service. They bypass each other like they don't see themselves. How do you get comfortable in your heart and then raise your holy hand to you, worshiping God, worshiping which God? Asking which miracle, uh huh? You're also laying hands on the sick. How? Why? Do you realize that you can kill yourself by unforgiveness? Let me back to John. First John. If any man see his brother sin, sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life. For them that sin not unto death. But there is a sin unto death, and I do not say that he shall be prayed for. There is a sin unto death. But if you read the scriptures clearly from where they come from up to the end, you realize it's one thing. It is the line of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will kill you quicker than anything. So many of the Christians you see dead and fail in their lives is because they have not forgiven. If you want to see the miraculous stop in your life, have somebody you've held in your heart. I don't care how under the grace you are. This is a principle. Think of how our master himself forgave us and loved himself for us. Find the liberty to look at someone in the face and say, I forgive you. Listen, some of us are ministers of the gospel. There are things some of you have done to us. If we were to hold them, some of you would not even be in the gospel anymore. Because we will judge you. But we don't judge, we just keep quiet and wait for you to grow. Then you grow, one day you come, ah, what's I'm doing? Yeah, okay, yeah. I like it, but fine, let's talk. And it, friends again. Now, for you, you're forgiven, but you, you don't want to forgive. Hallelujah. You must accept that in the gospel there will be men who are weaker. Don't ever enter into this life to try to shed your own opinions on weaker men. There are people naturally who will be weaker. Romans 14, that's one. Give me the message version of that. One, two, three, go. He says, welcome with open arms fellow believers who do not see things the way you do. There are people who won't see things the way you do. You, you see, they have to be having faith, but at a particular point they are being funny. Yes, hold your opinion to love and maturity. Even you, there was a time you were a babe, but we did all rub it in your face. No, we trusted on what is strength on you to raise some of you, wherever you are. Some of you, we, we saw how babe you were many, many years ago. But have we regarded you babes? There are things that show when somebody is mature. For example, if you can't trust God with your tent, you're a babe. I don't care how deep you are. But have we ever gotten your people to call you? You say, let me see, let me see. Did you say, you, uh huh? Did you say, let me see, you, bring them back. Did you, did, do we do that? Do we do that? No. 
to be pressured for them because you don't eat their tithe also, you don't live on it. Christ sustains you. But wait for them to also grow in it. There are people who will come in church and they'll get a statement and it's annoying, but understand they're just weaker than you. You, you know better. But don't rub your opinions on them. He says, one to people, he says, welcome with open arms for the believers, we don't see the things the way you do. And don't jump all over them. And every time they do, all say something you don't agree with. Even when it seems that they are strong on opinion, but weak in the faith department. Remember, they have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. I've seen some church folk who are too ruthless when it comes to baby. You guys, how can you be doing this? I swear, you guys, the devil, you said I was going to do Listen, they might be strong in opinion, but they have a weakness in faith. They might be weak. But you don't jump on them. You read spiritual baby. Come on, come on. How can you do that? You don't you have a history? See, yeah, I do. So like you have a history. And you came out of that history to the thing you are. Which audacity do you have to open your mouth when people who are just coming? They don't even know the ABCs of the spirit. Be patient with them. Stop rubbing your opinions over people every time you go come go wa fuka na ruo yo kuri mtu yena ai no kuri poti na jodi everybody has to be the way you are if they are not perfect the way you are they are not of god if they don't do the things the way you want them they are not under the spirit do you know people like that if some of you have looked at my years of ministry there is one thing i have never done i have never controlled your spirit that i bear witness before god and my conscience being clear before the one I account to, I do not control spirits of men. I refuse it. I might put you under bondage. Why? Because I might slay you in a law that ought to be great. But the mere fact that the anointing upon me resides, I have this confidence. I can't talk to you and you'll be fine. I can't. Even if I say hello, it's enough. I say the WhatsApp, it's enough. I carry that anointing. I trust it. Submission is true. Like Hebrews 13, 17 says, I watch over you like one who gives account to you for some of you who submit to me directly. But some people became spiritual watchdogs. I don't need to say, but because I'm more mature than you, therefore I should be rubbing things over you. You, do this. And some of you, if you realize, you can even take me for granted. Because when I'm around you, I get to your level and love you the way you are. I even get involved in your kiddish games and conversations. Not because I'm not mature. No, I am a very mature spirit. But I have learned that when a father has to love children, sometimes you have to get down to their level. And some of you will love, we dance together, we sit in the car, we go out and eat ice cream. But you can take it for granted. And probably even use that to abuse what's upon me. And if you don't have that maturity, well, one day you realize I'm just looking out myself. I, I just don't relate to you because probably when I loved you that much to bring you close, it could only have harmed me. You didn't understand that I loved you to wear edification. Because I don't want to abuse your substance. But I also don't want to be like some men of God who are so deep. They don't shake hands after service. They don't want to talk to anybody. They are so anointed. My own master ate with drunkards. What was he doing? Were they judging scripture? Why would you sit down with those guys and talk? By the time they call Jesus Christ the glutton and wine Bible, trust me, probably he ate out with the boys a lot of times. Probably their materials one day, the next day they are still at one cafe. But they are doing something with something. But some people are too spiritual. They are either on the mountain or they are on the pulpit. Mountain, pulpit. I've looked at all these men and I'll tell you, those guys are not anointed like we are. I promise you. Even the results we have made, they can't make a quote. We have made the lame walk up and blind eyes raise the dead and still stay with you. I love that from Lester Sumero. That man told me that you can still stay spiritual and be with men. Because I've seen men who are too spiritual that they are not with men. And I'm thinking, look at our master. Yes, he had moments when he went up the mountain to pray. But after those moments, he sees a little kid. Oh, let that kid come to me. For this is a dear one. There are men who don't even want to talk to family. They don't want to talk to children. They have. The killing attitude around them. Buddhists are all your dad. Don't quite a call. Oh, you are the cause of your So you are quite a call. You are the cause of your dad. Hey, I just couldn't see the other. I recall that. Tari, munda, inamu, iti, intu, alinamu. Hmm. Then they become immaturely spiritual and carnally out of line. 
that they even allude to things that are not existent in the spirit. If somebody has a perversion, they can shake your hand and you also get Jezebel. Do you know what I'm born of? Incorruptible seed, which liveth and abides forever. How can someone put in a demon? Do you know those Christians? Sometimes when you are praying, be careful. Some people when they are coming in church, some of them are devil worshippers. If you are a devil worshipper, you are welcome. I don't think in the five thousand Jesus fed all of them are worshipping God. One time when in a church, when I prophesied of I saw a woman being in a green cavera and then she put Juju in the church. And the church put, went at a store. So I said, a few months ago, there's a woman who left a cavera. The pastor said, yeah, we saw a woman. So that's why you think they don't live with here. They know. They can't live with here. No, no devil worshiper can live something here. If they do, I send the demons that they've left, I send them back to them to bring the person to me. They know. They can also have to take them into everyone. Some of us are neighboring things, but you don't hear us when we are screaming, oh, I was under attack. I've never been under attack any one day. Those my things of my grandfather's witch doctor. My, my, let it end the other side. Me, they don't. It's not pride. No. So choose. But people have become even spiritual past love. Listen, there are men who don't even have a quarter of this church. But after service, they want to sneak out without anybody shaking their hands. Some of us, after service, whether you have eaten or not eaten, we sit here. Oh, praise God. Even the person you prayed for in the service, they come back to the same issue. I know you prayed for me to be healed. But now, can you add me more prayer? I don't think. God. Happy now? Yes. How are you? Of course, I want to talk to you. You are dealing with all kinds of people. There are people who can't get straight to the point. You want to say, uh, Apostle... Uh, uh, then there's another one who won't even respect to being talked to. They'll snack their hands. Hi, hi, how are you? How are you? It's so great. Thank you very much for the summer. Eh? This guy will also be posing there. Hi. He speaks like five minutes. So what is you get at? The, the issue I wanted to tell you about is, uh, it's not that it is uh, something that I can't explain. <laughs> I don't know because uh, when I was a child, and you see I have two brothers, and if I want to explain you know what I want to explain, you know, Apostle, sometimes I have a lot to tell you, but when I meet you, I don't know what to, to say. I, I have, uh, brother, can you get straight to the point? Okay, let me get straight to the point. So one time when my mother was not dying, but he wants to get a point where he's 20, but he wants to be in front. By the time he's there, there are also others who are waiting so impatiently. Some are saying, I am going to Mara. And we deal with all that stuff. You sit there. Okay, please reach straight to the point when you come to me. In a talk and you'll get it. Don't beat about the bush. Yes, sir. Yeah. But why do I begin from begin from your need? What do you want God to do for you? Listen, the one praying for you doesn't need to know your whole story. Me, I want to know the end. That's the essence of phronesis. It must be all the end inside. That's what the wisdom is. If what you need is healing, it is it. Let me provide that. By the grace of God in faith. Don't be sayater mu nagenda nenya mumwala nembuka etintu when I jump TT. No, don't narrate that. What's your problem? My leg is swollen. Whether you jumped ice cream or you went over a Coca-Cola truck, that ain't none of my business. You need healing. Healing belongs to all. Be you healed in the name of Jesus Christ. That is it. Let me back to Roman. I'm almost finished. He speaks of experience where you do not have to say something to agree with. Every time they do or say something you don't agree with. Even when it seems that they are strong on opinions but weak in the faith department. Remember they have their own history to deal with and cheat and gentle. And that is the issue that has told me to realize that I would rather lose a battle in love than win it in strife. Always remember, lose a battle in love than winning it in strife. You don't need to compete and debate until you win battles with babies. No. Use it in love and say, okay, I've understood. But I feel in future, we shall be from this. And one day I hope I'll make sense. Consider move on. It's love to lose battles when you know you're stronger. It's what's called maturity. That's strength in the spirit. 
Not many people have that virtue. Like this man who are debating with us on doctrine. I sat with a bunch of eight guys, they all asked me questions, I was just speaking scriptures off my head until one man said, you guys, this guy knows the Bible, I talk him any other way, not the Bible. Guy, I'm in the Bible. Because everything they were reading, pop, pop, I quote scripture. Papa him, pop, pop. Until some man said, no, you did. this man knows the word. Go on something else, but don't argue with him on the script. But don't. Let me show you something. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a very interesting thought I want to share the five things. Let's go to the 22nd verse. This is the one thing I've learned. Romans 14, 22. Still, let's stay in the message. He says, cultivate your own what? Relationship with God, but don't impose it on others. You're fortunate if your behavior and your belief are coherent. Don't say, because I don't do this, therefore you shouldn't do this, me and the spiritual one. Do you know some people like that? I detest that spirit. Because among all, we should have actually had that preeminence to rub ourselves on you. But how many people have I come to? You know me, I never did this. I don't do that. The issue to me was very simple. I'm cultivating my own relationship with God. And I'll tell you the truth. When I understood the essence of living, I realized you can lead people, but you can't manage them. You can only manage situations. People are not managed, they are led. And when you learn the wisdom, of leading men, you realize you can only live by one simple thing. Example. I don't need to tell you, pray, pray. No. I will come to church and pray, you'll find yourself praying. I don't need to tell you, give. No. I will give enough to cause you to give. But some men are still their teaching giving. <laughs> Where is the mix? If there is anything seeking with any leadership in any ministry, and leaders who levy things on men they themselves cannot do. They were there speaking to the minister. He had gotten into the line of calling church members up innocently with because they know you have an anointing on yourself and you're exploiting them. That is robbery. Church members, have I ever asked anybody for money in your life? Do you remember me ever coming to you and I tell you, give me 2,000 shillings? I don't beg. Why don't I beg? Because I knew he taught me the principle to attract me. I can only attract it. I bless you. And some of you learn through that and you also bless others. And tomorrow when you start your own ministries, you'll also bless others. At the end of the day, you do not become a burden. You look at Christians who have become burdens to other Christians. Lend me money for rent. Lend me money for school fees. My children are all they have children. But they do what they must do to provide for their own children. They don't sit back prophesying the whole day. Hallelujah. These men of God want to go everywhere and get everything free. They want to enter a shop and they get everything. They want everything to be given to them free. They will even act a movie. It has become too ascending that some men of God even talk, they discuss their needs. They have not the reverse psychology of begging without directly presenting it. If I can only get five million, uh, that five million, he's speaking in the presence of a man who has money. Says that the man of, who has money also knows that the man needs five million. I will never tell you my needs. I only speak vision, and when I speak vision, I speak how I provide for it. Young Peter, my people are. So any man that does that, He's only doing that as a response by the leading of the action of the Holy Spirit. But it should never and will never be a mandate on them. But you sit over dinner and then you hear a very responsible man of God. You see, we want to build a toilet. We want to be speaking in the presence of white people. So that the white people can know that you are. So that the white guy can go and say, Oh, when I was praying, the Lord told me to send $300 for the toilet. Don't mention toilet in the meeting. Don't mention your building projects. Don't mention your plans. Mention your God. Speak of Him. He says, Your gifts shall make a way. I am too anointed that everywhere I go, I attract money. So let me come at money. They are cheaper. That one, even if you do what, I can step on any. You remember some of you went to a church, I preached, and after preaching, the pastor says, the I'm proud of the But he can't even ask himself, Why hasn't he ever been given money by his own people? Simple. 
When a diligent spirit is raised, he says he shall stand before kings and not before men. men. When you learn to be diligent in the spirit, you'll attract money. So when you see a man of God begging, there is something about his diligence that is wanting. I want you to hate begging so badly, more so if you're going to leave people tomorrow. Have a pride in yourself. But there are people, about that you even go and borrow your friend's shoe, you borrow your friend's bag, you borrow your friend's cloth, and not even ashamed for me to see you in another lady's dress. <laughs> Put on your torn cloth, and when you reach in the prayer and say, God, mine. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Seest thou a man, Proverbs 20 to 29, diligent in his business, he shall what? Stand before kings, and he shall not stand before men. He shall not. Just learn to be diligent. I promise you, everyone that you stand next to will want to bless you. Only explain your diligence. Why do you think some churches, the pastors are so rich and the sheep are poor? They are not diligent. They manipulate. So, when the Bible says kings, shall stand before him and not mean men. They don't have the anointing to make king. They only have the anointing to make poppers and make men lack. But if I can preach a grace and a word inside your spirit and create a kingly anointing on you, are you hearing me? When I drive, you will drive. When I build, you will build. When I build another plant, you will build another plant. When I'm doing business, you'll also do that business. Some of you, the way you came, you didn't even know the difference between a child and a short. But now some of you become so smart and I look at you and I'm saying, man, is this this guy? But when you enter the church, your shoes are like this. You didn't care. So I know these people, you're in Vizari, Eri, Mohango, Peter. Make it now. How can a chick refuse you? Uh -uh. You understand where I'm coming from? For me, it's a success. It's these small things that I count. If now you have faith to make hair, if you have faith to back. There was a time some of you, mama, 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 your hair was like this, your thoughts were also different, your prayers were not, your vision was also that way. So you find someone who is, apostle, how are you? They were walking anyhow. But now they walk like ladies. They're slow. They're holding bags. They're putting on colognes. They're smart. Yes, clap for yourselves. And that's how it's going to be. From glory to 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 glory. You cannot submit under me and you stay funny. It can't be. Give me three months with you. If nothing changes, find find another church. I bet my life on salvation. It cannot happen. Because he taught me the patterns of diligence. Not just the life and affair. He taught me the patterns of diligence. He told me the realms between which a man starts to contend with a mental assentment to a man when he starts to flip into the lines of faith. He told me that when the man enters the lines of faith, the true vision of what the man ought to have done, that is Joshua 1 to make his way prosperous and have good success. He realized that when a man was making his way prosperous, he had to raise the expectations of men. Because when these men read that he shall give you your heart's desires, he has good plans to make you prosperous and not harm you, to give you that future and that expected end. In the making of my ways prosperous, I had to design the expected ends of those that were realigned in my life. Period. I spoke of your health before you joined. Some of you realize, even when you joined this ministry, you stopped becoming sick. But you used to be a sickly thing. You were the joy of Jubilee Insurance. I'm not boasting. I'm telling you the truth. We understood that the expectations of men can only be drawn by men who have moved miles and years ahead of their own selves. If the spirit quickens, but the flesh profited nothing, I was not seeking for a quickening that would establish me in a life without men. For I knew how truly what was men. Paul said it. How truly what was men. So every person I see in the ministry is useful. I don't care whether she talks or gossips, she's my daughter, Munde Kele. If you have an issue with me, come and tell me I have an issue with your daughter. She is still mine. Some of you, you gossip, your sibs, your wife, but you're still mine. I've never denied you. That is why I have an issue when somebody raises an accusation against my own. I don't care. Yes, she could be a thief, that's true. Leave her alone. You think I don't know that she's a thief? 
Have you ever heard me make in high shop? He's my son. I know how to treat him. I will teach him the gospel by the living of the spirit and he shall become a success. That's my mandate before him. So the twa sababu na kukiriza kuingi la kanisa. Twa sababu koye. When we ask God, we ask for crooked things like you. Brethren, you all know that you are not of noble path. You are not of the wise. But oh, how this grace and this gospel watched over you. Some of you, if we had not believed in you, you would have been dead. Look how far you come from. But somebody had to stand and say, yes, even though you have this witness, I still believe in you. Some of you told me things that were too hard for a man to carry. But when I went to my bedroom, I did scold you. I said, no, I still believe in you. God can still work in you. Now when I see this success every other day, and the Lord increasing you, and you ask in grace, oh, I said to God, this is my reward. For firstly, they gave themselves unto the Lord, and then after they gave themselves to us. I watch over them. They are my own seed. I preach to them, I pray for them, I raise them, I fast for them, I bless them. When they have an issue, I will go before God and speak to God for them. Don't become another mediator. They don't submit to you. And neither is this your church. I'm sorry. But I have to be tough on some Christians who think that they are going to enter those doors and then start to restore everybody because they are spiritual. You have not raised a hundred. You're teaching a man who preaches two thousands every week. You need help. I'm sorry I'm not this tough, but I need to teach some people. Your own church is failing. You're teaching another man how to raise thousands. That is so unbelievable. First raise your ten thousand and then teach a man how to raise a thousand. If you fail, don't try to make it happen. By you teaching. Don't make that mistake. Or else, come and sit and learn. We will see the Lord watching you. We will raise. We will honor you. Like we've honored men of God. We will sit and you will teach us. And we listen from men of God. Emma has stopped when I'm hearing. But my brother here is my elder brother. He has stopped when I'm shutting up. Pastor Zach has stopped when I'm shutting up. I've attended meetings when Hezo is preaching and I'm listening. You keep on coming from. When we came in this church, all of us came with wounds. We came with a story. We don't need everybody to go back digging up our past. We want the future. And if anything is pointing me where I'm going, I don't need you to go back and tell me where I'm coming from. I might have issues, but that's my story. My story is simple. I am submitting to a person who sees my future, who's not ready to touch me for what I ate last week or how many I dated last year. He loved me anyway. That's Jesus. That's the guy we present to you. If Jesus was a gospel, some of us would have lost it. Yes, we see we are coming Do you know how many secrets my Lord has kept about us? He watches over in heaven. He knows who stole. He knows who killed. He knows who walked himself in the room last night. But he doesn't come to expose you, you did it. And then you see the prophet who come from somewhere. You, you're doing this. How many of you have known that I've even known your weaknesses? But I came in a whisper and I told you, I know you're doing this. I'm praying for you. And then you see someone cry. And after they cry, the next thing you know, they realize, they think that you judge them, you want, you love them. You bring them back in church. And the next thing you know, they're changing. Because they're not doing it for anyone anymore. They're doing it because the gospel is working in them every other day, both to will and to do, according to his good pleasure. Next slide, 22. Cultivate your own what? relationship with God, but don't deposit on others and you're fortunate if your behavior and your belief are coherent. That's why certain people have fallen, because they don't know how to restore spiritual. The Bible says, if you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness and meekness, least you be tempted yourself. Many of you, when you judge men who are lasting, you lasted worse. When you judge men who are lying, you lied worse. When you judge men who are not praying, you became older. Why? Because you're not spiritual to restore. If all of us were judging what men are doing, we'd all be doing what they're doing. But we're spiritual enough to know there's a meekness and love that precedes every kind of judgment. I'll first go back to Galatians. Brethren, you who are spiritual, give me the message version of that. Live actively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly, not judgingly, forgivingly, restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. Basic state of your money. No, no, no. The issue is not you starting to think of that. You, what you mean, what you mean, I cannot go back. No, 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 shut up. Forgiving you what? And hold your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day is out. You might realize you're actually worse. Okay, let's finish that up. 
cultivate your own what? Relationship with God, but don't deposit on others and you're fortunate if your behavior and your being are coherent. Next slide. But if you're not sure, if you notice that you're acting in ways inconsistent with what you also believe, some days trying to impose your opinions on others, other days just trying to please them, then you know that you're also out of line. If the way you live is not consistent with what you believe, then it's also wrong. So why are you pointing fingers on a man when you also have your own duty to fix? That's why whether I have holes or I don't, I never judge men. Period. I don't judge men. I love men out of it. And that's how the ministry grows. So when men say that, somebody actually said we pay people in Makere. Because the other day they saw 2,000 people sit on the ground in a living stone. And people rain hitting them. They said I pay them. I don't pay them. No. I preach to them. Hallelujah. Get to a point where men's opinions don't matter to you anymore. That's why I told you also, if you have issues with my own, come to me. Don't try to restore them in your backyard. And judging them and gossiping about them regarding what they did. Oh, good, is this? Uh, no, no, no. You don't. You come and tell me. If you can't tell me, hold your critical line. Because some of you, you also have holes. You know I know. In this world, if you account to someone, let it suffice. Because you account. One time a guy sent me a message at night and said, Mushu Bambani, you cut at that particular point. I said, now how can I help this guy? It was at night. I didn't hold him out. You, why you leave the quiet? Go, want to smile? No, 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 that was not my business. The issue is the man trusted you with what many people keep. How you handle it is important if he should trust you again. If whoever you account to is okay, let every man mind their own business. What I've been seen on you is not on you. Why? You read Hebrews 13:17. It's very, very clear. Obey them that have the rule over you. Submit yourselves wholly, for they watch over you, not the third party prophet. For they watch over you, not the third party prophet. For they watch over your soul as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. I have my lines of commitment to know what happens to those that I account for and watch over. So a man is not just going to come from somewhere and say, I see witchcraft on you, they have bewitched your cousin, your family. No, no. Many of you, when you came in this ministry, that's the first thing we fixed. So some prophets are in history. I'm not trying to make you proud here. I'm only saying your spirit must bear witness. There are people who have demons, and some of you, you were with me one time when we were in Kamwacha here. Almost the whole church had demons. Every demon I was calling, men would fly in the air. Ashes were cutting them from the air. So men should understand we are anointed. Even some of you, when you came, you came with demons, we prayed for you, you got delivered. We taught you how to stay free. Somebody cannot just come out of nowhere and find a new creation basking in the unforced prisons of his word. And then start to say, Oh, you feel bored. Because that's not your lying. Don't tell them you're lying, no. You just forgive them in your heart and move on. After they finish, trash it. So the Bible says, if a prophet prophesies, don't scorn a prophecy, but judge it. Why has God allowed us to judge? Certain men don't judge by our levels. So you find Paul in Antioch who has taught much with a divine mandate, with an instruction from the Arabian days when the Lord has mandated with him a race, a course to run under Gabbath because you see the spirit. Oh, the guard and cloth of this man that is holding him, he shall be arrested in the city he goes to. Paul left at Gabbath and said, that's a lower life. For me, I even await death. For me, I'm under divine assignment. Race and course are online. Agabus, you're coming with your heat from Jerusalem because you know how to prophesy, you think you see in the spirit. That's the thing about Paul. It's not arrogance, it's the truth. When a man is in Antioch, he says, Tire in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost has come. The Holy Ghost came, they went to Antioch to have much teaching where the Christians were called Christians and they were teaching prophets. They are not just loose prophets. No, you go to Acts 13. I want to show you something. Message version. Acts 13. The congregation in Antioch was blessed with a number of prophet preachers and teachers. So these were prophets that understood the mysteries of the word. Now there comes an Agabus who doesn't know how to teach or even preach. So he doesn't even understand the lines of divine purpose. He doesn't even know the assignment of the message of Christ that supersedes 
just the call of God on a man's life, to the higher calling by which all men are called to the seeking of the apprehension of that which Christ apprehended them for. Why did he appoint Paul, the master builder? And you're telling a master builder how he's dying in the next city when he has not even yet built a quarter of his foundation. So Agabus comes. Oh, the clothes of this man are going to be. It's true. In the level of Agabus, he sees that there is bondage. But in the level of Paul, but there is a member here. Years ago, their father walked out and locked the bedroom too. Four years. They prayed, they fasted, they believed, they've done everything. And then they come to me one day and they say, Oh, he left, locked the door, blah, blah, blah. I said, No, for a sign, God is going to do something. This week, that very week, God wired the man who had never gone to that bedroom for four years and he opened it back home. You get where I'm coming from. Now, there are people, for all those years, yes, they are believing in a certain God and life. But may have another understanding of making him open it, even if he has been away for years. Now, you don't now bring in those levels of Muslimania, it is witchcraft that has refused him. Whether it has or it has, then there is a principality that must listen when I say that that door must be open. He said, I shall decree a sin and it shall be established. Okay, let some people rebuke demons. Even me, I rebuke demons on fresh graduates here. But when you graduate out of it, please be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to yourselves in some and hymns. Do not be drunk with wine where in is excess, but be ye what? Filled by the Holy Ghost. And you shall be singing psalms and hymns, spiritual songs to yourselves, making melody in your heart. That's church. Not So one time I find a demon saying a girl, I told her, Then some Christians look at me like a man. No. Even the demons know I can be sarcastic. Get to your feet. <laughs> the message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at sonerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.sonero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make nonsense.